Roger on Union 121. Wait, 18, Roger. Roger. All right, see what mess they've made today. Oh, man, this is shameful. Stupid YouTubers, they do one or two videos and they think they know everything. All right, I need to see where this took place. Somebody take me to the crime scene. the parking lot, see the parking attendant of the vehicle is a white van, unknown license, so there's a female Hispanic. Mary Queen, 2711 Mary Queen, 27 Smith. 27, our battery suspect is at 318 East 3rd Street. Is that related to your call? I think we found our culprit. Hey, I need to see Yogi. Bring him in. So, Mr. Yogi, if that is your real name, here like you've uh, been really busy. It says you like to rebuild things, engines and stuff. So um, why don't you just tell me what you've been working on lately? Well, I mean, I see you have my file, so you must know more than I do. Why don't you tell me? Look, don't get smart with me, bub. You know why you're here. Why don't you just make things easy on everybody so I don't have to make it difficult for you. Start from the beginning. Well, um, back in April, I bought a car off of eBay auctions and brought it home and started working on it. No, no, no. More recently than that. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I had once done a hot tanking video for my 2007 Audi, so I figured since Pepper was so dirty, I could use that same technique on my Porsche 911's engine. Hey, and welcome to Yogi's Garage. I'm Yogi, and welcome. This is a special episode here at Yogi's Garage. I am doing another hot tanking video, and for those of you who've been following me, thank you for that, first of all, but you'll also know that my hot tanking video for me and my small channel has over 12,000 views at this point, so I must be doing something right in that video. So what I wanna do in version 2.0 is kinda up the stakes a little bit, right? I'm gonna double what I did before, and I'm gonna tackle it using a very expensive part or parts from a Porsche 911. I'm gonna hot tank the entire engine in this video. So I hope you find something useful out of it. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over some of the things that are needed for this video and I'm kinda of sitting behind one or two items here. And notice, if you've seen my first video, I didn't really know what I was doing on my ratio of water to chemicals, so the results were kind of mixed. Now, I'm not screwing around, I'm doing a one-to-one, -one or what would you call that? That would be um, a full strength. I'm, I'm dilated. Yes, I am gonna do a full strength hot tank. So let me get this straight. You used this technique on some other engine and decided to do it again, but this time on a Porsche 911 aluminum engine? Yes, I thought it would make it nice and shiny. You son of a oh. bitch! <clears throat> I, uh, I apologize. Uh, that was very unprofessional of me. Please, continue. Um, as I was saying, yeah, I used purple power at its full strength. 98% of the fluid that's going into these trash cans is gonna be the purple power and maybe some water just to top it off. And of course, the trash cans. So the difference here on the trash cans is that obviously there's two of them, 
right? I was going to weld a whole stand and use this big old trough contraption, but then I'm like, well, how am I going to drain all that nasty fluid? I can't just pour it out in the yard. It'll kill my grass and ruin the environment. So I decided to just use a second trash can. And these trash cans are really good quality. I picked them up at Home Depot, paid about a uh, dollar a gallon, basically, because they're 31 gallons and I bought them for $31. See, I'm kind of good at math, although Yogi Mama would disagree with, she's nodding her head. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're gonna clean. So as I mentioned, uh, as part of enhancing what I did before, we also need to enhance how we manage all the bolts and nuts and things that have a special place on the car. And Yogi Mama came up with something like this. So I went to the dollar store and tried to find things that I could repurpose. And I was specifically looking for baskets or colanders or something that would hold all the little nuts and bolts and tiny pieces. And I found these, again, dollar store. But then I needed a mechanism to hang it on. You know your wife has a face, I watched right? Video. I used hangers and they weren't really stable. They bent too much and then I'm walking along the aisles at the dollar store and I see these over the door racks. These are, this is a great idea. I think it's strong enough to hold the weight of all of the nuts and bolts and right. stuff. So you can really push down on this and it's, it's not going anywhere. And, and so I think that especially this one, and I got two of each size, but especially this one is deep enough that you don't have to have the water level too high and use as much chemical to get to it. Right, right. But these shorter baskets might be nice when you already have the larger engine. Pan up, Yogi, pan up. If we take that out and we have a second batch, we can use the deeper baskets for just more small parts. Yeah, because I usually need a big basket for my double duty. So yeah, good deal. <laughs> so thank you for that. Okay. One more to go. Wait, wait, wait. You not only used purple power at full strength, but you superheated it too? Uh, yeah, I mean, hence the name hot tanking. It's like I'm watching a train wreck in slow motion and I can't look away. What was that? Uh, nothing, nothing. I'm sorry. Not a whole lot of steam. <laughs> yeah, we're sitting at about uh, 200. So tell us where we're at, Yogi. I think that purple power ruined the engine. What did it do to it? It pitted the aluminum and it looked like it ruined the liners and the cylinders, which is the worst part. The pistons look really pitted on top. It's almost like it ate through it. All the journals here are pitted. What's this cracking I see in here? That's the liner. Hmm. The chemical did that. Talk to 
me about what you're doing here. Trying to fix my mess up. Nothing to fix though. This is a disaster. Tell me about it. The purple power potency was too high and it ate through the aluminum. Not through, but it ate the aluminum. Petted it? Yeah, real bad. So you're hoping, trying to... Hoping this is salvageable. The sleeves in the cylinders are toast. That's the big one. That's the big expense. It's just totally a mess up. They're gonna have to be redone. And there was, I can't really see it in the shot, but I saw that it looked kind of like cracking mm -hmm. earlier. Yeah. You can kind of see it there. Yeah. Yep. Had you heard of other people using purple power to hot tank before? Yeah. I guess just not aluminum. my own arrogance I should have done more research and instead of thinking I knew all that I needed to know about hot tanking and then I went at a hundred percent potency and this is what happens wow this seems to be a very open and shut case it's it's really evident what happened here so, Yogi, what would you have done differently? Well, you know, I think the vendor should have been more clear as to what it does to aluminum. But at the same time, I should have done my due diligence and done more research and looked on their website just to positively verify that it wouldn't damage the metal. It looks like you've learned your lesson here, Yogi. So I'm going to let you off with a warning. I think you know what you have to do. And I think Yogi Mama would agree that this is a project worth finishing. So you're free to go. Don't let me see you back here again. I have learned my lesson. I've learned uh, not to do this ever again and to do my research and maybe even let the professionals handle it. Thanks, detective. Okay. <sighs> wow. It's been a week since I've been in front of a camera. Um, you know, I have a bit of a Ego, I mean, I think you kind of need an ego when you're uh, putting yourself in front of a YouTube video at least once a week. Uh, or putting yourself in front of people in a YouTube video once a week, that's even harder. So uh, it, I took a little time to lick my wounds and to reevaluate my whole purpose or reason for starting this channel. And I've come to the conclusion that this type of accident was inevitable. Uh, I'm just glad that it was not uh, an accident which would cause human injury or any type of uh, death for that matter, but more of just death of an arrogant decision. And it's gonna give me more, I'm gonna have a, a, some, I've had a chance to reflect and uh, just overall decide what I'm gonna do moving forward. So what have I been doing this past week? Well, I've been licking my wounds, first and foremost, trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with this engine. Um, there's a lot of negative out of what happened, but there's also a lot of positive. And I'm gonna try to be positive overall and start with the positive. And the positive is this. I reached out to the community and overall minus one troll, that's not even worth mentioning, um, were very supportive. Uh, some of them have told me that they've done this same exact thing where they dipped an aluminum part in a 100% concentration of degreaser like this, which in this case was purple power, and the aluminum got eaten up. So I bounced that whole story off of the community, The Renlist was the, one of the first ones that I went to, as well as the Facebook community group. And uh, put my story out there, you know, laid myself down on the sword, if you will, and let everybody know that, yes, I messed up. I'm learning from that mistake. 
and here's the story. And a lot of people were very supportive and I'm very grateful for that. One in particular was a, is a gentleman named Lee Jenkins from Hartech. I'm sure a lot of you people are nodding your head saying, yep, that guy is a saint. And he is, he is. Another fellow YouTuber named Finn from A Man in a Garage often mentions Lee on his channel for being a lifesaver and uh, coming to help as far as uh, providing a bottomless pit of knowledge when it comes to these engines. So Lee stepped up, he private messaged me uh, as well as some other cool folks and a local owner of a shop here in Houston that I had on my channel. And that's what it's all about for me. And that inspired me to pick myself up by my big boy pants and finish this project no matter what. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna finish this project. So what did I learn? Well, don't dip aluminum parts in 100% concentration of anything. Always read the instructions and go onto the website and read any type of frequently asked questions because on the bottle it doesn't explicitly mention do not use on aluminum. But if you go to their website in the frequently asked questions, it says do not use on aluminum. Yes, Purple Power should put that on their bottles and I'm not done quite reaching out to those folks and I'm gonna let them know. Initially, the engine looked destroyed. You've seen the video, you've seen the footage of what I'm willing to show and it just, it, it's a lot, it looks a lot worse than it actually is. So Lee reached out to me and he, and he does recommend probably a re-sleeving uh, of my crankcase, but he also recommended that I try to use a, the, uh, just put a piston back in the cylinder with the rings and just do the piston motion with it in, in, in the cylinder and let the rings smooth out, or at least try to smooth out the buildup on the walls. Now that I've soaked the cylinders with marble mystery oil or a motor oil, it doesn't really matter what you soak it with, but I've, I soaked it with marbles, it looks a lot better. The pistons, which are right here, the pistons look a lot better. Yes, they're rough to the touch, but I think a bead blasting is gonna save me here. The journals on the crankcase are gonna have to be repolished. I'm gonna take this whole thing to a machine shop if I can determine whether or not the cylinders are still in round and meet the standard tolerances. And the only way to, 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 to do that is to use a bore micrometer as well as a micrometer on the piston itself around here and around in the skirt area to make sure that the clearances are within spec. If they are, then I dodged a huge bullet on this and I can move forward with the project. If it's screwed up, the only option is to replace the crankcase and they, they come in sets, so I have to buy a pair and they're between $1,500 to $3,000 shipped depending on where I get it from and how many miles are on the crankcase. Um, and there's some challenges there too because I have to have them show me the insides of each one of the cylinders because if I'm getting a crankcase that needs new bores, then I'm kind of, models will just do it with what I got. I need one that has good, clean cylinders, so we'll see. Okay, so <laughs> this video was supposed to be about hot tanking and it ended up being so much more. Um, yes, I'm embarrassed. Uh, it's, I've never claimed to be a professional. I only play one on TV to give you guys some insight on, on how to work on projects like this and so that you're not overwhelmed or intimidated by such a a project and yes let me let someone like me make these mistakes so that you don't have to and I think that's the lesson that we all should get from this is thanks Yogi thanks for screwing up and now I won't do it well <clears throat> you're welcome and I'm fine with that I'll, I'll wear that badge of honor that yes I hot tanked a Porsche engine in a hundred percent concentration of purple power and that's probably my thumbnail image of me doing that. <laughs> but <laughs> here we are a week and a half or a week later, it's been seven days. And uh, yeah, nothing's moved, nothing's changed. It's still uh, a disaster. But now I have a path to move forward and I'm gonna try that. So I'm gonna go work on the pistons and if it's positive, 
I'll show you. If it's negative, I'll probably show you that too. So let's get back on track and try to make this video worth something. Let's do it. I'm gonna use my. Okay, arms. I'm gonna spare you the long version Hold of this it. part of the video and just basically Keep tell you that this out. technique did indeed polish up the cylinders properly. But after a lot of soul searching and talking it over with Yogi Mama, I decided to reach out to LN Engineering and have them re sleeve my crankcase. Right. So, with that said, that when work. once I get the shipment information we'll from LN in. Engineering, I'll. Be sure to show you guys a video of the whole process of sending okay. that over to them. I'm also going to get new pistons so, as well as having it bored out here. to a four liter. So be sure to look for that in, in a future episode. Before I end this video, I wanted to give a special thanks to Yogi Mama. Some of you may not know that last year around this time, my wife was diagnosed with colorectal cancer. And from then to about a week ago, she had been undergoing chemical and radiation treatment for that tumor and then finally she had her surgery and is recovering. So this video is of her after the surgery. So special thanks to Yogi Mama for putting on a smiley face even though she wasn't at 100%. I love you, honey. Thanks for everything. And thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Yogi's Garage. YouTubers, they do one or two videos and they think they know everything. Well, it, it looks like you've learned your warning here, Yogi. What? Looks like you've learned your lesson. Oh, uh, learned your warning. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> well, it looks like you've uh, you've learned your lesson here. Warning, warning. Well, I cannot. Okay, tell from me. the top. On a Porsche 911's aluminum engine? Yeah, the bottle didn't state that I couldn't use it on aluminum. It just said engine full strength. So I connected the dots and cooked it in 100% strength aluminum cleaning. You're supposed to slap the shit out of me. Aluminum engine? Yes. I, I thought it would clean it nice and make it nice and shiny and, and pretty. Full strength. Yes. Full strength. You son of a. Oh. <laughs> you really hit me. <laughs> yes, I thought it would make it nice and shiny. You son of a oh. bitch.